This is Modern Persian Food, a culinary podcast for today's food enthusiasts. We talk about classic Persian flavors, modern recipes, and embracing culture and identity through food. I'm Bita. And I'm also Bita. Welcome to our show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 153 of the Modern Persian Food Podcast. Today, Bita Jun and I are going to be talking to you about one of the basic foundational recipes of Persian cuisine, which is basmati rice. And we'll touch on tadik a little bit, but this is part of our little mini series that we're doing, focusing on back to basics. Last week, we covered off our pantry essentials and a fun little format of little quiz game, which was a lot of fun. And this week, we're going to be talking about rice. We're going to talk about kind of our go-to ways of getting rice on the table for like easy meal during the week or for some light, entertaining, my go-to ways, be such go-to ways. And next week and the following week, we're going to be talking about some fun other recipes that you can have in your back pocket when it comes to Persian food, eating, and entertaining. And yeah, that's what we're going to chat about today. I'm here as always with lovely Bita Jun. How's it going? Good, good. Yeah, our goal is to, you know, here we are getting back into routines, whether you have kids back to school or not. I always think of this time of year as sort of getting the meal plans back out and figuring things out to just run smoothly during the week. So mm-hmm. in our house anyway, we do have rice on the regular rotation. We'd love for you to also feel like it's an easy side to your weeknight meal. We have actually a bunch of different episodes focusing on rice specifically. If anyone wants to go back, you know, our episode number three, right off the bat, when we were fresh newbies, is about rice. We talk about tadik. We talk about tadik art. We did that fun episode with watermelon last year. We also talk about rice cooking techniques and also layered rices. So if you want to get more in-depth information for what we're going to be covering off from today, please go back and search for those episodes on our website and whatever player that you're listening to. So if you want to get more information, definitely do that. But today, let's just kind of talk about like go to. So since our last episode, I think both you and I have been, Bita Jen, have been kind of testing new ways of how can we get rice on the table. And for me personally, I don't have a rice cooker that I use normally. I have limited counter space. You've heard me say that before where I live here with my family in the middle of the city. So we don't have a lot of space. So it's hard for me to have kind of like a dedicated cooking equipment, take up room on the counter. So I have an instant pot which is locked away in the cupboard, but I did break it out and I did try a bunch of times to try to make rice in the instant pot. I'm looking for like an easy way. I'm looking about like kind of set and forget if I could do that with the instant pot. And unfortunately, my findings weren't that great. And perhaps it may take more rounds of kind of recipe testing, but I didn't love the results. So What I did love about it was that you could kind of set and forget and put it in there. And it was great if you want to make regular rice, like regular basmati rice, you can do that. I found that soaking the rice in a little bit of salt beforehand helped. But if you want to just get the rice itself, it did come out fluffy enough. It was a good basic rice. But when I'm making rice, I really want the tajik. And I wasn't able to master a good tajik with the instant pot. So I'm back to my original way of my kate way of making it. But I did want to call out that I, I wasn't a big fan of the instant pot results when it comes to tajik. Now, you were doing some testing, and maybe you have a better approach for Tadik. Yeah, you know, I, I try to use minimal oil. Our concept with rice is we love it. We're going to eat it. We're going to choose the best white, long-grain basmati Indian rice for the good results. And I do recommend that you do that. If you're going to make a Persian rice, make sure you have a high-quality, extra long-grain mm-hmm. rice. And we just sort of watch our portions on it. So I love to use the rice cooker. I have for years. I have used so many different sizes and brands and versions of rice cookers, and I can get more into that with you soon. This is not really answering your question about what I tested. This is just what I normally do. Mm -hmm. I like the set it and forget it of the rice cooker, which is basically if I have time, I'll soak the rice. I'll definitely rinse it. So right up there with getting good quality rice is to rinse it several times. Make sure that your water is running clear, you're getting the starches out, and that is so that your grains aren't gonna stick together. 
And then if there's time, soak it for a minimum of a half hour, longer the better. Yeah, I second your rinsing and washing the rice first because I think actually in some rice gathering techniques, they actually use arsenic. Have you heard that before? No. So I've heard that also in addition to getting all the starch off, it's really important to rinse your rice so that all that comes off too. I think. Holy cow. I mean, that just puts it at a whole nother level. I'm going to be rinsing it 12 times now instead of six. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely rinse it a lot too. My mother-in-law taught me to rinse it six times. At first, the water will be cloudy. Each time you're rinsing it, so you're just kind of like pouring the water in and stirring it with your hands, mm-hmm. and then you're pouring it out. And each time that you do a rinse, it's going to get clearer or clearer. So you want to get it clear. Then you fill it up with rice, put like a handful of salt in there. That's another key tip for making Persian rice is a lot more salt than you think. The salt also helps with whatever happens in the soaking process to make sure that your final product grains aren't going to stick. Persian rice doesn't stick. It's fluffy. Right. It's fluffy and is light. And actually, I heard that the salt also helps prevent the grains of rice from breaking. Mm -hmm. Another good point. You want them to be intact, long, separated. Yeah, and we're snobby. We're a bit snobby. Persian can can be snobby about the rice. And so I would just also want to throw some advice to give yourself some grace. So you yes. choose your vessel that you like. You choose your method that you like. And for me, it's turned out to be a rice cooker. I like the set it and forget it. After I've soaked, I then rinse the salty water out. And, you know, I've got it down to a science The rice cooker cups are technically half cups. I've measured them. I call them cups, but they are half cups. So for our family, I use two cups of raw uncooked rice for about three and a half cups of water in the rice cooker, more salt. I crunch up my hand into like, uh, like almost like a balled up palm. And that's how much salt I put in there. So probably a tablespoon, right? (laughs) Very scientific. Two hand cups (laughs) full of salt, about two spoons of salt. Okay. And just a little bit of oil. And that's the other reason I love the rice cooker. You don't need much oil. Uh I believe you don't use quite as much water as your kata method. And you don't really need that much oil. So you use your preferred oil. And that's my go-to. That's my super easy way. As far as experimenting, I have been kind of experimenting with making tadig in healthier ways that don't require a ton of oil. Because let's face it, Rice is like one of your starches or one of your carbs. We love it. We eat it. We kind of watch our portions. And then for tadig, it's basically like a fried carb because you need more oil to get good results. So I have some things I've been testing out with that. Using the air fryer. Yeah, that sounds like a great way to do it. Yeah. So I actually sometimes cook rice for my dogs even. And I'm sorry for any ancestors that are rolling in their graves. But when I'm making rice for the dogs, I use extra water. I actually do break it. I basically completely screw up a good Persian rice and I make like a dog rice out of the quality rice. And more like sticky. I turn it into sticky. As it's cooking, I put more and more water. And I just keep stirring it kind of like all the things you're not supposed to do with rice with Persian rice once you've got it all in place you have to kind of let it just steam and cook and so I kind of make this very sticky rice and then once I have that and I've refrigerated it and I've you know doled it out to my dogs it's kind of all gelled together right so my scientific experiment involves I can kind of like shave off a layer of that all stuck together rice with a knife or a spatula or something, and then basically air fry that with very little oil, maybe just a little bit of spray oil so that it doesn't stick to the bottom and some salt and some saffron. And it works. It's like a crunchy, it's almost like a crispy rice that you might get at like a sushi restaurant. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, that's a great idea. And then you can make good use of your leftover rice too. Yeah. So if you don't want to invest in a rice cooker, which by the way, I don't think you need an expensive one. I happen to think that the very cheapest ones work just as well as the fancier ones. There are some claims that some of the more expensive brands will make a better tadig, but really at the end of the day, making tadig in a rice cooker just involves having it cook longer. And so if you have a cheap version of a rice cooker that just has a button that you push down, you just basically have to keep pushing it down. Or sometimes you push it and it it goes on cook versus simmer. You just keep pushing it so that it stays on the higher heat of cook. 
Yeah, so you're just cooking it longer. You're just cooking it longer. The fancier ones, the fancier rice cookers have a dial or a knob, and you can turn it such that you put it in the range that it will make tadig for you. Okay. So some people like to have the control of it that way, so. Yeah, and it's a nonstick lining of the rice cooker, right? Right. Yeah, so that makes, that helps. Yeah, you can get a cheap rice cooker for, you know, like $25, but if you don't want to, then making rice in the kate method that we have an entire episode on it is a one pot way of making it. And Bita Jun, you do a really good job of describing that. Why don't you talk about your process? Sure. So this is my go-to way of making rice. Making kate is just kind of like a more humble, easy, shortcut way to make your rice. What it is in both these methods that Bita Jun and I are talking about, the rice cooker and also this kate, the difference with this style of rice versus a obkish type, which means strained process of cooking the rice. The difference is, is that we're actually cooking it within its same liquid. So the liquid we add at the beginning that we use at the beginning is the same liquid that we use for the whole thing. It's a the like more traditional way of making rice is that you actually par cook the rice, you drain it, and then you cook it where this is all in one pot. Yeah, your all in one pot that you call kata is basically the same process as what a rice cooker does, but there's just a tiny bit more management. Yeah, you have to kind of like watch it a little bit more. And then I actually really enjoy putting a layer of tadik in. So like Bita Jun's method is that you continue cooking it and you can continue it longer and you will get a lightly toasted tadik on the bottom of it. But if you wanted to amplify that tadik, maybe add a little bit of saffron, maybe add a little bit more oil to make it a little bit more country. Or if you want to layer potato or tortilla or like lavash bread, what you do is in midway through the process, you just take the rice out of the pot and put the tadik down. An extra oil. Yeah, an extra oil. And then you can also do this for the rice cooker way or the kate way. So basically, same type of approach to the recipe as what we just talked about with the rice cooker. You rinse, rinse, rinse. And, you know, what we do is you just put it in a pot, fill it with water, gently fill it with water, with cold water, kind of rinse it either with your hand or use like a spoon and kind of drain that a few times until it runs clear. And then I usually cook two cups of rice or a little bit less, one and a half to two cups of like real eight ounce cups. When I cook rice, that usually give us a little bit of leftovers, but it's not like a huge portion. Hey friends, just wanted to ask you a quick favor. If you would like to join on to our mailing list, there's three ways that you can do that. You can either go to our website, modernpersianfood.com. You can scroll down in the show notes in whatever app you're using to listen to this podcast. And there is a button that you can click to sign up for the newsletter. Or on Instagram, we have it in our bio, direct links that you can sign up. Sign up and don't skip a beat. I just wanted to make a note that if you have never made rice before, or even if you have, just a reminder that the conversion roughly is, let's say you have one cup of dry uncooked rice, that will basically double in size. So the one cup will turn into roughly two cups. So that should help you figure out how much you need based on how many people you're cooking for. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's good to know. And I think that's just another footnote as we get into this is that everyone's kind of recipe will be a little bit different. So you'll have to kind of customize your recipe one based on what type of like stovetop you have, if you have gas versus electric, or you know how powerful it is, versus also what kind of pot you're using, how wide it is, you know, like how the lid is, and also the type of rice that you're using. So these are kind of like general guidelines. The more you practice, the better you will get at it. But just kind of keep those in mind that it's like, oh my God, well, she said like one and a half, and this is, you know, one and three quarters. You're gonna obviously have to just adjust it accordingly to the way that you cook your rice in your home. Absolutely. Thank you for that reminder. It is 100% experimenting. We can give tips for what's worked for us, but you have to experiment. Even my rice cookers are all different. Some are the kind that have a little hole that lets, you know, a little bit of steam out. Others I have are more like what you would see in a steamer or, you know, almost like a pseudo instant pot that don't Mm -hmm. let any air out and they stay completely shut lids. I have different versions of those. So, and they give different results. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I have my favorites, right? I have my favorite ones that I know exactly what proportions to use. Do you have a favorite pot? And is your pot for your cat to nonstick? 
Yeah, I do have a favorite pot. I actually have two different pots depending on how much rice I'm going to make. I have a smaller one and then a larger one for when I'm like having guests and I have to make a bigger one. Yes, they are nonstick. I do use a nonstick version and it has to have a lid, a nice firm tight fitting lid. And so basically, so I wash the rice. I put the rice in the pot that's been washed. I don't necessarily soak it. I typically don't soak my rice before I start cooking it. I put it into the pot. I cover it with water. I don't measure my water with cups. I cover my rice with the water and I cover it with about an inch more water than there is rice. So in the pot, when you look at it, there's like an inch higher level of water. But I mean, like that kind of ratio works for me when I'm making a small pot of rice and works for me if I'm making a big pot of rice. So yeah, just have like an extra inch of water. The cat tail method. That's where you don't drain the rice. Yes. Right. That's right. And then a little bit of salt, a little bit of oil, and I gently mix that around and I let that come to a boil and I let it come to a boil and absorb all of the water. And when it's pretty much have absorbed all the water, I'll test it. I'll make sure that like the rice is al dente at that point. If it's not al dente, if it needs more water, I'll add more water to it until the water is absorbed. And then at this point, this is where if I want to make a tadik, I empty the rice out of that pot. If I don't want to make like a golden, you know, saffron tadik or whatever, I'll just at this point, just continue cooking it. But I love to do the tactic. I empty the rice out into like a reserve bowl or like a, another pot or something. I just kind of take it out of the pot. And in the bottom of the original pot, what I do is I add a couple glugs of oil enough to like nicely coat the bottom of the pan. And then I'll either add the bloomed saffron, which is like some strands of ground up saffron mixed with hot water. And then I'll kind of like bloom the saffron first. And then I'll add that to the oil and add a little bit of water. And I add about a cup of the halfway cooked rice to the bottom. So I mix that with the oil and the saffron and the water. And I make a nice flat layer at that point. And then I put the rest of the rice on top of that, I layer the top of our rice. So if you were to kind of take a cross section of the pot, you'd see a bottom layer that's like golden and has saffron and oil, and then the rest of it is all white. And then what I do is then I cover it and I gently steam that. When there's enough steam accumulated in the pot, what I do is I put a layer of paper towel or like a tea towel in between the lid and the pot. And we call that a damkoni. And that absorbs the extra steam so it doesn't add more moisture to the rice. And I let it cook low for probably, again, this is one of those that you're going to have to see how your stovetop works. I'll let it uh, kind of like steam like that for at least 25 minutes. If I have a bigger pot, it could be like 40 minutes. With the stove that I have where I live right now, I like to go low and slow on it. And then it'll eventually get this beautiful tadik. And what I can do is I'll sometimes pick up the pot and kind of shake it back and forth. And I can hear that like, oh, the tadik is hard because I hear it like kind of, you know, moving around in the bottom of the pot. Where if it's a tadik is not ready yet, when you shake the pot, it doesn't actually, you can't hear anything moving. But you know, after like half an hour. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That's how I test it out. Cool. That sounds delicious. I like to invert it and it kind of looks like a little like cake type of thing. You lift up the tadik off of it to get some extra steam out. And I love that beautiful rice. It smells so good. It's one of those things that people are like, oh, you're Persian. Like I want to learn how to make rice and tadik. And this is pretty much my go-to easy recipe to get rice in our bellies and on our table. Awesome. I just want to touch on the other method, which is the parboiling method. It's more like making pasta Mm -hmm. and you are using a whole lot more water, a lot of salt again, and you're cooking it halfway. So it should be white in the middle, clear on the ends. You could, when you lift up a grain, you could see it that way. When you taste it, it still has, it's soft, but it still has a tiny bit of crunch. And that's when you would drain the water and then put the oil, go for a tadig if you want and layer it's often used for layering, then layering in whatever Persian rice you're trying to make, green bean rice, fava bean rice, you name it. Then you layer it in, you make your steam holes, and you just do the rest the same. You go ahead and you put your cloth on your lid, and you go for it. So that's called parboiling for layered rice. And then let's just quickly touch on any other ingredients you might use. We mentioned saffron. It comes in many forms. If you get the threads, a lot of people like to grind it with just a little bit of sugar or salt to help get a nice grind going for roughly a quarter teaspoon. I use about two tablespoons of almost boiling water to get a nice bloomed saffron going. It is sometimes sold in the already bloomed saffron liquid form. And also I've seen it, Sadaf has a beautiful spray saffron I've been using for years and years, which I love as a shortcut. And you could just spray that right on top. 
of either the top of your rice or right down where you're making your tarig. Another thing is spice called somar. That's the culinary sumac. Many people use it for their kebabs and meats, but also I know that people like to also sprinkle it on their rice. And it adds like a citrusy, yummy flavor to it. And lastly, I know that if you are a big yogurt lover, rice with yogurt is super delicious as a combination. Yeah, for sure. And then that rice and yogurt, sometimes called kato most, is actually good if you have a little bit of a stomach ache. You can eat that to kind of settle your stomach a little bit as one of those ancient Persian oh, remedies. Yeah. I like it with these days with vegan butter and salt and pepper. I could mm. eat like so much rice. I love it. Yeah, it's so good. Persian rice is the best. Yeah, to your point about the layered rice. So, you know, making the parboiled version is kind of the more standard way to do it. But I did want to just say that if you did want to take kind of like the kete recipe or even the rice cooker one, the second half of the cooking process where it's more steaming or like when you're layering it back into the pot that you can kind of layer it with your additional ingredients that you want to cook with that rice. Another way that you can actually do it is if you just make the white rice and then as you're serving it, as you're plating it on the platter, you can actually put a layer of rice down, a layer of whatever it is, a topping. For example, like if you're making a lubia polo, like a green bean with like meat, sauce, you know, layered rice, you can do that. Or if you have your cooked lentils and you want to layer it through there, that's another way to do it. So you can use that basic rice recipe to make these layered rice dishes as well. Oh, good point. Yeah. So if you are making a teddy egg and you're going to do a fancy flip Mm -hmm. and it's going to kind of stay in hopefully more of a cake form, I've definitely had my share of flops where it doesn't. Yes. That's great. But if you're just doing it on a standard night, you're not maybe going for a teddy egg every time, then, you know, everyone can just help themselves right out of the pot or the rice cooker. Or you can also serve it on a platter and kind of make like a beautiful mountain and then reserve like a little bit, maybe just, you know, a quarter cup to add your bloom saffron to make a beautiful yellow bit that you can then put on the very top and present it that way. And yeah, I feel like Persian rice, like if you're going to make us have saffron rice, it typically isn't like the whole pot of the rice is not saffron. They usually kind of reserve the saffron for just the top garnish on top of the rice. So I have to interject that I do make a total saffron rice. I do sometimes bloom it and put it right into the water in my rice cooker. And then we just have yellow rice, saffron rice, which is super delicious as well. Yeah, sounds delicious. I like to do that with the, my tachin is make it all like saffrony. Yeah, of course. Which we actually have a great episode on tachin. So if you're going to go back and listen to the rice ones, you definitely include that one in your list of episodes to listen to. We will link everything. We will link our previous kate episode, our tadig episode. We have a saffron episode. We'll put damkoni. If you're interested in any of those find the information in the show notes. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Pita Jun, for taking the time to go over making easy go-to rice for our Back to Basics series that we're having here on the podcast. And if you, our listener, are wanting to share this with your friends or with your partner or with some of your coworkers, and you guys can all break up the menu and one of you guys takes the rice, one of you guys gets the Misa Garsami that we're going to be talking about in a few weeks and next week's showstopper episode of Gorma Sabzi with our special guest Gian joining us and walking us through that recipe. That would be a fun way that you can kind of divide out the different parts of the Persian menu and have a dinner party together with your friends. Thanks for the sneak peek. We're finally going to have our Gorma Sabzi episode, the iconic Persian herby bean stew to have with your rice. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Modern Persian Food Podcast with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time.